It's a pleasure to talk to you about this film. The first thing I appreciated is that it was a different departure. It's not repetitive from the first one. It was self-contained. This goes in another direction. Was right. it the intention from the beginning? Yes, I mean, definitely. You know, um, the once we knew we were going to go on a road trip with the guys, then I think I felt like tonally we could go in a different direction. And, you know, once they were on in this sort of circuitous journey, it enabled us to meet different people and bring in sort of a new cast of characters and, and you know, shift tonally and maybe sort of try to have more fun. Yeah, you allowed them to have fun. You allowed yeah. them to be self-deprecating yeah. and to bring something organic to the roles that probably were, you know, off, uh, offset in the first one. Right, right, right. Tell us a little bit more about how you exploited what was happening offset in the first shooting into this one's most organic one. Well, the first one, you know, was really was a sort of a two-hander with Mike and the kid. And it was it took place all in Tampa. This one, you know, it was three years later, Mike's out of the business. So um, once he decides to come back and join them and go on the road, you know, it, it, it enabled us to go in different places, literally and figuratively. Uh, what do you most enjoy about them? Oh, sorry, Can is I just it? Interrupt you? Yeah. Well, I just tell someone to go and stop that noise and then we'll pick up. I, th I think so, because obviously uh, it's so it's distracting, isn't <laughs> it? It's really, really loud drilling in the middle of Ryan's interview. Someone's going to have to go stop. It's always mind boggling to me how they can be drilling in, at, at Claridge's at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, when is he drilling? It's funny. Okay, uh, Bruce. Yeah. I mean, somebody is going to make a call. I don't know how long that's going to take, a couple of minutes probably. Should we just, is it that bad that we can't carry on? Oh, it's distracting it's to you. Very bad. Yeah. <laughs> Would it only if it's free? I yeah. Why don't we carry on and hopefully in a minute somebody will uh, stop that. Okay. The call is being made. Well, it's stopped. Very quick call. Off we go. Fingers crossed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about the different <coughs> departure that this one goes to. Obviously, a different right. location, a different uh, a character arc for, for everybody. Tell us, just elaborate on that. Yeah. You know, and also, part of the reason you know, Channing and I wanted to make the sequel to was, I'm pretending I'm not hearing it, <laughs> was, was um, you know, we wanted to tell the story of the other guys. You know, we didn't really get to do that in the first film. The first film was really Channing and the Kid, and I think we all felt like the other guys were, you know, I love them as people and I love them as characters, and I, and we all thought it would be fun to, the second movie would give us an opportunity to sort of open up the character of each of the guys, and you know, by sort of being in this food truck mm. on the road was kind of a, a rolling locker room for them to get to hang out and we could explore their characters. Uh, they go to a so-called stripper convention. Does that exist in real life and how much was it an inspiration? A version of that I think exists in real life. We, you know, we, we turned it into something of our own imagination a little bit. But I think there is a version of that. It's different though. You had to handle about a thousand women as extras on right. that set. Uh, a lot of estrogen going on, so <laughs> apparently very flustered and very happy to be there all day. So tell us a bit about that experience. It was great. I mean, it was really great. You know, having those, having the people around was a great sort of jolt of energy and kept us all going and shooting. And it was fun. I mean, it was it was really fun to have the crowd there, sort of cheering the guys on and cheering us on as we were filming, so I loved it. It must have been very important for everybody not to objectify neither the males nor the female <clears throat> characters of this film, so <clears throat> how much were you aware of it and how much was it a target or did it just happen? Um, well, I think part of the fun of the movie a little bit is that it sort of turns what, you know, traditionally women are objectified in films and I think it's fun a, to turn it on its head a little bit and make have the guys be objectified to some degree but I think what I I think what we all wanted was to the guys are self-deprecating mm -hmm. and I think the characters are likable and so I don't think there's anything for me it was important that there's nothing sort of mean-spirited going on and that 
you know, sort of the subtext for me was about friendship. You know, the friendship between guys and friendship between men and women and women and women. And, you know, I think that was sort of a key thing for me. <clears throat> you know, even in the fact that there's not a traditional romance in the movie. You know, Channing's character and Amber, you know, by the end they're friends. And, and Channing and Jada had a relationship. And this movie is really about them sort of reclaiming their friendship. So I think, yes, the guys are stripping and naked but you know there's hopefully people get there's other you know the 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 sort of friendship aspect of it and the kind of joyousness of the the journey was kind of the fun thing for me no absolutely and this is what the, i think the audience is responding to as well it's not about male strippers it's about you know dancing finding yourself finding your own talents right. and what you want to do uh, and that's been the recurrent theme all the way hasn't it yeah i mean that was what that was what was important to us. And, you know, certainly the big, the the stripping routines that they do are, I think, fun. And, I mean, I know for me they were really fun to film. So, and we all had a great time sort of on the days, on the performance days when the guys were doing them. It was pretty fun. Uh, we'll talk about the male characters a little bit later on, but the females, I mean, Andy McDowell and Jada Pinkett and Amber, everybody was so uh, strong female characters and had something very specific. So let's start with, with Jada and how you created a character for her. Well, look, I mean, the truth was that role was originally written for a man. <clears throat> and thank goodness we were smart enough to realize that was a mistake. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Bless you. <clears throat> Once, um, once we knew that Jada was going to do the movie, you know, Channing and I had a Skype with her and we sort of immediately n knew she would be great. She helped us sort of shape her character. I mean, she came on, uh, you know, a month or so before shooting and sat with Channing and the screenwriter and I and really helped develop that character. So she actually had a lot of input into that character. What I mean, we had the broad strokes, but she she was really she was a great part of sort of helping to create that character yeah, she was and she loved it I, oh good I, did I she talk about that yeah, too yeah, she loved yeah it. she's fantastic she is she's great at it it's yeah. so natural yeah. angie mcdowell as well delivers a performance incredible yeah yeah she was really she she was you know immediately as soon as we work on the script the first person i thought of and and she was she was fantastic had great ideas and um, you know, really went for it, and was, I think, uh, I think she did an amazing job. And Amber, Amber, the same. You know, Amber, really, really helped us sort of shape that character and create it into somebody who was sort of, you know, on her own journey and trying to find herself, and you know, was really, uh, really embraced the idea of not becoming sort of the traditional sort of romantic interest for the male character True. which I thought was fun no it was fun and, and it's good that it goes to places that you don't expect right. uh, talking about that you know I think the secret of the success of someone like Channing Tatum is uh, you know talent a lot of hard work and the nicest guy ever so tell us what makes him so successful and personable well that I mean you really hit it all on the head and I think that who he is I mean his sort of naturalism as a performer really comes across and he truly is an amazing guy and a, a fantastic guy really smart he's a he's full of great ideas and part of you know part of what makes him great is as a producer even he realized as we were developing the script that you know it was as important to and and as interesting to sort of develop the other characters and and that and and he really had great interest in making sure that all the other guys you know really had moments to shine and that their characters were fully fleshed out i mean he was he was very responsible for making sure that you know that was all done 